Julia Holter, something in the room she moves, album review, let's chat about it. Hey friends, what's going on? John here from What's Spinning here tonight to chat about this latest album from Miss Julia Holter, Wisconsin-based experimental extraordinaire. She has been at it for many, many years now, touching down on the sounds of chamber pop, baroque pop, and so many more, and doing all of those sounds so much justice. Now, initially, I wasn't too blown away by early albums from her, like Tragedy, but over the years they have warmed up to me quite a bit I, I mean I don't want to say uh, Twin Peaks but I was a big Julie Cruz fan around that time and listening to her tragedy project did give me some of those vibes but I have enjoyed it more over the years and ever since I've kind of only taken off and become a bigger Julia fan with each release for the most part Ec Ecstasis has always enchanted me from the word go and Loud City Song I mean it is not an easy listen. Most of Julia's work is not, this album included, but uh, Loud City Song is absolutely mesmerizing. And I've always thought that Have You In My Wilderness is just like the absolute peak medium for Julia's music, because we got the very lavish, very refined pop songwriting, but we also got her more experimental side as well. Oh, by the way, her last album, Aviary, the thing is an absolute monster. It is an hour and a half long. It is once again not an easy listen, but it's pretty damn kaleidoscopic. Now, we did hear from her last year in a collab sense with the Spectral Quartet, and it, it was fine. I mean, it certainly had interesting ideas, but for my money, I wanted to hear Julia back in the studio in a solo stance, which we get here. And honestly, leading up to this album, I did like the singles quite a bit, but I realized this time around, they did take a little bit longer to sit with me. But while that is the case, um, I do think that a lot of this album is still Julia on top form, pumping out some great stuff, albeit a little bit on cruise control. Sun Girl starts this album off, and much like its title suggests, this is a very bright, sunny, colorful, kaleidoscopic track. I mean, this thing is really full of life, and I do mean that. Every instrumental here just seems to come alive as this track rolls on. It comes off like a damn breathing, living organism, just shifting with each passing second. The lively percussion that we get, the really great use of field recordings and ambiance, as well as Julia's absolutely heavenly vocals, yes please. And listen, th this is not a track that you just plippity plop on and just kind of tune out. No, 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 no. This is a kind of track, and this is most certainly a kind of album that you need to turn your brain on for. But it is a very bright, sunny, meditative experience with some really weird experimental moments thrown in for good measure. It also does the job, and that is getting me pumped for a Julia Holter project. But I do think some of the next couple of cuts are even better. Like These Morning, for example, this is a lot more of a streamlined tune. It's not as jammy and experimental as this album's intro. But honestly, this track is stunning and even more in my wheelhouse because it is beautiful. It's a sultry, enchanted, late-night ballad with Julia's vocals coming off oh so nice. It's sweet and it's steamy. It's just got layers of just so many secrets. I mean, I've always loved this very intimate, very elegant, very refined sound from Julia, and this is no different. Also, really, really love this album's title track, Something in the Room She Moves. I mean, personally, I've always thought that hearing Julia in a setting like this, this incredibly intimate, quiet setting, that's where she's at her most powerful, and this track is no different. I mean, this background is so quiet on this track. I love the way that each instrumental just quietly makes its way in. It's really serene. It's simply gorgeous, and it's so easy to just let this track grow around you. And by the time that this track gets to its finale, it's pretty staggering, honestly. And when Julia Halter is on and, like, in full force, uh, a lot of the instrumentals on her solo albums, her studio albums, sound pretty live to me. They sound pretty full of life. You never know what's going to happen at any second. And that goes double, maybe even triple for Materia. This is an even more intimate track. It is so sweet on the ears. It's light. It's charming. It's got a lot of room to breathe. And it is the shortest track here, by far, and, like, by a big margin. But I do really think as far as just, like, a track that salutes Julia's vocals, look no further. Now, I will say this. This is far from my favorite Julia Halter project, and one or two tracks on here really do stand out in the worst way. Take, for example, Me, You. This, this track... 
this is far beyond the worst track here, and one of the worst tracks I've heard from Julia in some time. I mean, this is just way too stripped down for me. I mean, I know that she's going for a sort of meditative experience here, but it just ends up coming off mundane. I mean, compared to tracks like Materia or Ocean, which we'll get to, this is so tame. And it's a shame because I have so much respect for Julia and her music, but this is so... It just, she's selling herself so short. And it is another very long track. A lot of these tracks are pretty long. I mean, this one is 5 minutes, 55 seconds. It feels like 50 minutes. Also, who brings me as a finale? This one really let me down. I mean, we're going to talk about talking to the Whisper at some point, but, I mean, long story short, I think that that would be a much better finale to this album. I mean, I hate to say it, but as a finale, this track is a real letdown. I mean, I mean, listen, Julia really did bring her heart and soul into this track. It's not like she didn't try. But compared to every other track here, once again, this seems phoned in. I just know that we can get better. I mean, outside of that, though, I will say, uh, while far from my favorite Julia Holter project, uh, there's a lot of great moments still to come. Like Spinning, for example, another very subtle, very pensive, very colorful track. The synths are light and sweet, but everything else about this track is just as genre-pushing as the rest of this album. Julia, when she's at her best, sounds like, I don't know, otherworldly entirely. And just all these instrumentals sound like they're slowly coming to life around her. And that's what we get here, and it's a great sound. It's whimsical and alien, but it's also rooted in something familiar. Just know that if you're not a fan of Julia's music to begin with, this album may be a little rough for you. And let me tell you, Ocean did take a little while for me to ease up to, mostly because... I mean, I've always liked hearing Julia in a very intimate, sort of, you know, stripped down atmosphere, but very, she hasn't done much in ambient in a while, but she does really do it justice here. And yeah, it's full of everything that you would expect out of a full-blown ambient track from Julia Holter, with woozy synths and just a surreal atmosphere, but I think she does it a lot of justice. Evening Mood is just as chilling. This may be the most, like, hauntingly beautiful moment here. It's warm and silky smooth, but it's also completely and utterly formless, constantly shifting. It is a very surreal track. This whole album, for the most part, is very surreal, much like its album art. But there's a subtleness and a grace to this track that I just feel like this album really needed, and Julia sounds on top form. And Talking to the Whisper may be my favorite deep cut here because Julia Holter, you have some tricks up your sleeve, you brought out the 80s synths. Uh, but this is far from, you know, a who's who of throwback pop artists. No, sir. No, the very airy, light synths and the patient drumming just twist this album sound just a little bit. And like I was saying earlier, there were some Julie Cruz elements to her early work and her vocal work on this track does bring me back to that. It's one of the longest cuts here, but ugh, this atmosphere is so divine and so fascinating, I can't say no. And don't even get me started about when the woodwinds and brass flow in. They are absolutely stunning. This track is easily my track of the album. I think it's the coolest thing here by far. This is a pretty decent album from Julia overall. It's not her worst project by far, but it's not up to her usual wowing quality, at least for me. I honestly wish it was a little bit longer. Plus, you know, th that finale is just so limp, and, and the Me You track is just so unbearably boring at the end of the day. I'm sorry, guys. But for now, I'm feeling a very, very, very strong 7, because there there's so many great ideas on this thing, too. But let me know what you all think down below. If you like the video be sure to give us a like give us a subscribe and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future and until next time have a great day friends